K tutorial number 2, Defining Imp, lesson 3. In this lesson, we will learn about the syntactic category K of computations, about how strictness attributes are in fact syntactic sugar for rewrite rules over computations, and why it is important to tell the tool which computations are results. We will also see a K rule that involves cells. Computation structures, or more simply computations, extend the abstract syntax of your language with a list structure using a tilde larger than kind of arrow, read followed by or and then, and written as a curved right arrow in LaTeX as a separator. K provides a distinguished sort K for computations. The extension of the abstract syntax of your language into computations is done automatically by the K tool when you declare constructs using the syntax keyword, so the k-semantic rules can uniformly operate only on terms of sort k. The intuition for computation structures of the form t1 followed by t2 followed by and so on followed by tn is that the listed tasks are to be processed in order. The initial computation typically contains the original program as its sole task, but rules can then modify it into task sequences as seen shortly. The stickness attributes, used as annotations to language constructs, actually correspond to rules over computations. For example, the stick of two attribute of the assignment statement corresponds to these two opposite rules, x ranges over identifiers and a over arithmetic expressions. The first rule pulls a from the syntactic assignment context and schedules it for processing. The second rule plugs a back into its context. Inspired from the chemical abstract machine, we call rules of the first type above heating rules and rules of the second type cooling rules. Similar rules are generated for other arguments in which operations are strict. Iterative applications of heating rules eventually bring to the top of the computation atomic tasks such as a variable lookup or a built-in operation which then make computational progress by means of other rules. Once progress is made, cooling rules can iteratively plug the result back into context so that heating rules can pick another candidate for reduction, and so on and so forth. When operations are strict only in some of their arguments, the corresponding positions of the arguments in which they are strict are explicitly enumerated in the argument of the strict attribute, for example, strict of 2, like above, or strict of 2, 3, for an operation strict in its second and third arguments, and so on. If an operation is simply declared strict, then it means that it is strict in all its arguments. For example, the stickness of addition uses the following rules. It can be seen that such heating cooling rules can easily lead to non-determinism, since the same term may be heated many different ways. These different evaluation orders may lead to different behaviors in some languages, not in IMP because its expressions do not have side effects, but we will experiment with non-determinism in its successor, IMP++. A similar desugaring applies to sequential strictness declared with the keyword SEQ strict. While the order of arguments of strict is irrelevant, it matters in the case of SEQ strict. They are to be evaluated in the specified order. If no arguments are given, then they are assumed by default to be evaluated from left to right. For example, the default heating cooling rules associated to the sequentially strict less than or equal to construct above are the following. Here A1 and A2 range over arithmetic expressions, but I1 ranges over integers. In other words, A2 is only heated cooled after A1 is already evaluated. While a heating cooling rules give us a nice and uniform means to define all the various allowable ways in which a program can evaluate, all based on rewriting, the fact that they are reversible comes with a serious practical problem. They make the k-definitions unexecutable because they lead to non-termination. Let's now clean all this up and discuss how the k-tool makes the use of heating cooling rules practical. To break the reversibility of the theoretical heating cooling rules and, moreover, to efficiently execute k-definitions, the current implementation of the k-tool relies on users giving explicit definitions of their language's results. 
The K tool provides a predicate, is K result, which is automatically defined as the S syntactic constructs to K result. The compile tool, depending upon what it is requested to do, changes the reversible heating cooling rules corresponding to evaluation strategies to avoid non-termination. For example, when one is interested in obtaining an executable model of the language, the default compilation mode, then heating is performed only when the to be pulled syntactic fragment is not a result, and the corresponding cooling only when the to be plugged fragment is a result. In this case, for example, the heating cooling rules for assignment are modified as shown. Note the non-termination of heating cooling is avoided now. The only thing lost is the number of possible behaviors that a program can manifest, but this is irrelevant when all we want is one behavior. As will be discussed in the IM++ tutorial, the heating cooling rules are modified differently by compile when we are interested in other aspects of the language definition, such as, for example, in a searchable model that comprises all program behaviors. This latter model is obviously more general from a theoretical perspective, but in practice it is also slower to execute. The compile tool strives to give you the best model of the language for the task you are interested in. Can't results be inferred automatically as computations which cannot be reduced anymore? This is a long story, but the short answer is no. Maybe in some cases it is possible, but we prefer to not attempt it in the K-tool. For example, you may not want a stack computation to count as a result just because you forgot a semantic rule. Besides, in our experience with defining large languages, it is quite useful to take your time and think of what the results of your language computations are. This fact in itself may help you improve your overall language design. We typically do it at the same time with defining the evaluation strategies of our languages. You currently do have to explicitly define your k-results if you want to effectively use the k-tool. Note, however, that theoretical definitions, ones which are not meant to be executed, need not worry about defining results. That's because in theory, semantic rules apply modulo the reversible heating cooling rules, so results are not necessary. Let us now clean everything up and define our first K rule which involves cells. All our K rules so far in the tutorial were of the form left, right to right, when condition, where left and right were syntactic or more generally computation terms. Here is our first K rule explicitly involving cells. Recall that the K cell holds computations, which are sequences of tasks separated by the followed by arrow. Also, the state cell holds a map, which is a set of bindings. Therefore, the two cells mentioned in the rule above hold collections of things, ordered or not. The dotted dots, which you also call cell frames, stand for more stuff there, but stuff that we do not care about. The rewrite relation is allowed in K to appear anywhere in a term, its meaning being that the corresponding subterm is rewritten as indicated in the shown context. We say that K's writing is local. This rule says that if the identifier X is the first task in the K cell, and if X is bound to I somewhere in the state, then X rewrites to I locally in the K cell. Therefore, variables need to be already declared when looked up. Of course, this K rule can be translated into an ordinary rewrite rule as shown. Besides being more verbose and thus tedious to write, this ordinary rule is also more error prone. For example, we may forget the rest variable in the right-hand side. Moreover, the concurrent semantics of K allows for its rules to be interpreted as concurrent transactions, where the context is all read-only, while the subterms which actually rewrite are read-write. Thus, K rule instances can apply concurrently if they only overlap on read-only parts, while they cannot if regarded as ordinary rewrite logic rules. Let us now clean up everything except our new rule. Compile im.k using a documentation option, say minus minus pdf, and check out how the k rule looks in the generated document. Nice, isn't it? 
The total dot frames are displayed as cell tears, metaphorically implying that those parts of the cells that we do not care about are torn away. The rewrite relation is replaced by a horizontal line. Specifically, the subterm which rewrites, X, is underlined and its replacement is written underneath the line. In the next lesson, we define the complete case semantics of IMP and run the programs we parsed in the first lesson.